our hyper-progressive government in Washington wants to reward women, to give reparations for women, for all the evil men have done from them, to them down through the ages. And what is their response? How do they do this? What reparations are on tow? They made them sign up for the draft. Welcome to Equality, Women of America. Here is our reparations to you. You become frontline soldiers. You become cannon fodder. How about that? I'm Dr. Duke, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. All right, Katie is kicking off things today's show with a look at the health of our republic. Konnichiwa, Team Healthy Republic. Now, I'm not coming to you from Tokyo, but I am still Katie, that millennial who is actually cheering on all of Team USA, not like the Gen Z college twerps. We'll get to them shortly because today I'm talking about the future of the Olympic Games and how woke they may go before imploding. If you like Team USA, go ahead and give the video a like, share it, and then subscribe to the new Healthy Republic channel on YouTube, the channel we had to create because we've been censored and YouTube even told us so. On the channel, I will be putting some exclusive videos on what it means to be in a healthy republic, so you'll want to check it out. In fact, in the spirit of the athleticism and the Olympics, I did post a video of True Fitness a few days ago. I highly recommend watching it, and then, of course, you might want to do some push-ups. And when you're done with that, comment below with your answer for today's question. What are your thoughts on the Tokyo Olympics thus far? I'd love to have some dialogue in the comments, so please, people, be interesting. Now, on to those whiny Gen Zers who will not be cheering for America in Tokyo. I don't like being an American either, even though I'm born here. I think there is such corruption and a crumbling infrastructure. Like, why is there no free health care? Why are so many people suffering because of housing? And that is such a great example of how corrupt it is here. Go away then. Move. Just go to any other country. I can't wait to see how much better life is in any other country. But they won't ever, ever do that. Instead, they will just claim victimhood. And that brings us to new Olympic event number one, the ladder. <laughs> the ladder will not be a physical event because that would be ableist, but rather it will be a matter of who can climb the intersectional ladder to achieve the greatest of all victimhood statuses. I could call it the pyramid, but there is already a white supremacy pyramid, and we can't have that. I'm guessing that all of the athletes for this event will be between the ages of 18 and 24 since these are the college kids and yes i am calling them kids purposefully according to a poll last month by issues and insights just 36 percent of this age group is proud to be an american this makes perfect sense when all the college students are told that they are victims all the time and all the time they are victims i'm going to be rooting for athletes individually I'm not going to be rooting for any uh, team just because it's some country that I live in because the truth is I shouldn't, patriotism shouldn't be that strong. I'm in this country because I was born in it and because it gives me some opportunities it doesn't mean that there aren't things to fix so I'm not going to root on someone just because they come from the same place as me. I'm not proud to live in a country where I can't even go down my own neighborhood and see people putting up their Blue Lives Matter flags telling me that my life doesn't matter. I'm not going to root for someone because they come from the same place as me. His words. Here's my response. Does this transfer over to, I'm not going to agree with someone just because they have the same skin color as me? Simmer on that one for a moment while you are walking down the street and no one, and I mean no one, is actually saying your life doesn't matter. That's pure projection and he knows it, but if he can play victim, he'll work his way up the ladder all the way to gold. Now on to event number two, world jargon. For this event, the leaders of the respective countries will face off in a tribulation of terms, a war of words, or in the case of Joe Biden, a trial with the teleprompter. I think the Olympic Committee can just scam off me and call the event, what the what? I'm really going to be in trouble. Biden never disappoints, except with everything he does as the President of the United States. Well, by the way, I think that is, that's happening. And be, look. Think about this. You actually just saw the wheels come to a screeching halt in that clip. Look, think about this. And by the way, one of the things I've gotten able to get done, I've get, 
I have overwhelming support from the African American clergy that I sort of come from and my sort of support. And the wheel stopped again. But then he found his African American clergy that he sort of comes from. If there are but three rounds of judging from each country's leader, surely Biden will bring home the gold with this entry. I've heard you speak about it because you always, I'm not being solicitous, but you, you're always straight up about what you're doing. Yeah. And the question is whether or not we should be in a position where you uh, um, are, why can't the, the, the experts say, we know that this virus is in fact, uh, um, uh, it, it, it's going to be, uh, or excuse me, we, we, we know why all the drugs approved are not temporarily approved, but permanently approved. Yeah. Or maybe this should be his final round. The people who seem to have the most impact are, the, are, are you know, that for that 17 year old kid, the kitty he or she plays ball with. Mm -hmm. you, you, you got the vaccination? Yeah. Are, are, you, are you okay? I mean, you seem, no, it works. Or, you, you know, or, 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 or the mom and dad, or, 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 or the neighbor, or when you go to church, or when you're, you know, no, I, I, I really mean it. There are trusted interlocutors. Think of the people. If, if your kid wanted to find out whether or not there were, there's a man on the moon, or whatever, you know, something, or, you know, whether those aliens are here or not. Or, 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 USA, USA, USA. If you know what old Joe just said, please let him know because he's completely lost. His confusion leads him to snap at reporters who ask pretty logical questions. And at the Olympics, I'm not sure if he'll get bonus points in the event of world jargon for being pissy at a reporter or if he'll face a one-tenth reduction. I haven't really worked out the details of the event yet, but, well, it's Joe Biden. Mr. President, Veterans Affairs, Mr. President, Veterans Affairs is going to have a mandate. You are such a pain there. in the neck when I'm going to answer your question because you've known each other for so long. It has nothing to do with Iraq. He's such a delight. If you're still watching this video, first off, good for you and thank you. And secondly, you're probably saying to yourself, well, Katie, surely this is all silly. There will never be a non-physical sport in the Olympics. Okay, fine. The final sport to be introduced in the next Olympics will be physical. Event number three, drag race. Yep, I'm talking about the catwalk of drag queens. RuPaul has made millions from his reality show that has 13 seasons, so in the name of equity, it must now be an Olympic sport. Thank you, Forbes, for doing the journalism we didn't know we needed. This heavy-hitting piece entitled, From Pulled Hamstrings to Broken High Heels, Drag Can Be a Dangerous Sport. Here's how to strut safely. Yeoman's work. Yeoman's work. Thank you for that. And again, if you think that sounds silly and will never happen, think again. We already have men competing in women's sports in the Olympics on Canada's soccer team and New Zealand's weightlifting team. We care about the Olympics. We care about our favorite soccer, well, like, sorry, football club. Um, we care about the Rugby World Cup. We care about sport. It is central to society. So if you want to say, well, I believe you're a woman for all of society except this massive central part that is sport, then that's not fair. So fairness is the inclusion of trans women. That's not fair, says the Canadian man who crushed women's cycling. And quite frankly, if a man can wear a white one piece and be the cover model for this year's Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, then it's highly probable that the Olympics will be overrun by the left's twisted notion of reality. Because it already has been. The 2020 Tokyo Olympics was doomed to be full of politics and activism with a lack of pride for the USA, even if the thing actually would have happened in 2020. So the question becomes, what will 2024 look like in Paris? Will it be a French Revolution? Until next time, go Team USA and stay healthy, America. Joined now by Vicki McKenna for our weekly Culture Cast segment. Vicki, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Well, you know, one of the issues we talk about in this culture is the hypocrisy. We've talked about the hypocrisy of media, right? That the very same things they accused Trump of without proof for four years, they are now letting go because Biden and Biden's the son is engaged in it. And so another example of this, perhaps the biggest example of this in our culture right now, is the way we're treating women. And it was just decided this past week uh, with a number, a majority, I might add, of Republicans voting for it that we are now going to require women 
to register for the draft, which means, by extension, that should we have a draft and a war, women will be marched into battle as well. Right. And, and so everybody is clear about this. The moment the United States decided to allow women into forward combat, into the infantry positions, is the moment the argument was teed up to require women to, to, to uh, sign up for a selective service. So th- this is because I, this is because I think people misunderstand maybe the, the, what, what happens when you put a physically weaker person who would, would be a target by our enemies, every one of our enemies, be it China or ISIS or Al Qaeda or whomever we might be fighting, would take a look at women in the infantry, and that's the target. They're the ones that would be um, put at highest risk. And you're so, so you're in, in the in the zeal to try to prove, you know, Helen Reddy was right, and I am woman, and I can do anything. You would actually put America's young women, mothers, young women, at risk of of being targeted and tortured and killed in combat to make the point that we've checked the diversity box adequately. It's insane. And yet Republicans have gotten themselves wound up into this argument uh, to the point where they're not thinking it through or they just don't want to fight it any longer. Well, you not only that, you, we keep hearing how we have to protect women on college campuses from, right. pred- from predatory men. There are no more predatory men than ISIS, for instance, should they capture you if you're a Good woman. Point. Before you that's are, exactly right. That's right. Before you are tor- 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 tortured and killed, you will be raped. There's no doubt about it. And so yet we have no, on a college campus where they have to magnify and over hyperbolically inflate ra- uh, rape statistics to make feminist points, you, there's no doubt out what happened to these women on the battlefield. That's the first thing I want to point out. The second thing I want to point out about this is you are endangering the men because when a man oh, is standing can. on either side with two female soldiers who do not have the same capacities by virtue of his masculinity and his instinct and his evolutionary responses, he's going to have to be deferential and try and trying to look out for them in ways he wouldn't have to do if he had very, very uh, militarily ready men next to him on each side. You know, and I've talked to I've talked to men in the military. I've talked to women in the military about this, and they all agree with you that this is going to it, it's it shatters unit cohesion. It makes men because of, of men's natural inclination to protect women. It makes men less safe. It makes units less safe. It makes readiness less effective. All because again, we're trying to prove that <clears throat> that women are. That I guess in order to, um, you know, ameliorate the historical treatment of women better in most in the United States and in most places throughout history, but the horrible treatment of women in the past of America, that what we have to do is sacrifice them to rape, torture and death and also put the men at risk of uh, of death and and uh, and and, you know, an attack as well, because damn it. You know, this is this is the patriarchy we're fighting here. I guess this is the big way to give you the, give the patriarchy the big up yours is by putting women at risk of rape, torture and death. Yeah, think I, about I this. know that I know that when I was sitting around thinking, how do I fight the patriarchy? I would want to sacrifice myself to rape, torture and death. What would be the equivalent, Vicky? This is kind of like you just said, this is reparations uh, in a way for what we've done to women. Now, can you imagine a similar circumstance, uh, an analogy, if we were going to pay African-Americans reparations and instead of giving them money or wealth or property, we said, okay, we're going to put you in the frontline positions right. on the, right, can you imagine, we're going to put you, you're going to be cannon bait, right? You're going to lead the charge up Pickett's Hill. We're going to put you right in the backyard of ISIS and right. give you the glory glory of being the first one first man over the hill how's that for reparations i, I don't i don't think that would <laughs> hashtag <go>. equity <laughs> <laughs> after the break was, there there's right there's your equity and that and how would that sit and but that's exactly oh. that's exactly what people are proposing to do to women it's madness after the break let's talk a little bit more broadly about what this means for combat but also uh, all the other instances in this weird culture of ours that has decided all of a sudden in the last five years that women rather than being protected, the whole feminist movement has been destroyed, rather than elevating women and suggesting that women are somehow inherently superior to men, we've decided to go the exact opposite way and destroy femalehood altogether right after the break.
Okay, Vicky, let's pick up the question I asked you at the end of the last segment. What's going on in a culture? As five, 10 years ago, we were moving in a direction where women were seen as somehow superior to men. Men were supposed to shut up. Hashtag me too. Whatever a woman says is true. Whatever a man responds is a lie. How in five years have we gotten to the point where the whole progressive movement now is actually targeting womanhood, targeting motherhood, targeting the freedoms of women, the right to play sports against girls? What happened? happened here. All right. But for, at first, I want to ask how we are going to uh, register women for selective service. Are they going to self-identify? This question. <laughs> you know, I mean, what if, what if you identify as neither gender? Just, I mean, you know, big question mark out there. If, That's certainly going to be a question if for I, a liberal federal judge if, to answer. If I were in that position, I would immediately, inv- as a woman, I would immediately invent a gender called pacifist gender. Right. Which pro- <laughs> which by my very biology prohibits me from actually participating in military activity. And what can they say? I mean, you got one hundred and seventy four of the stupid things anyway. Right. Either that no. or I or I would I would come up with general uh, five star general gender confusion. I'm binary. In other words, which you binary. You have to treat me like a five star general. Give me all the money and let me stay behind the line. <laughs> Because, because literally, what, what can the government do at this point? But, uh, but carry on with what you were saying. All right. So, you know, but if you think about this, the attack is on the concept of, of I think it all goes back to the attack on the nuclear family. If you can upend, if you can obliterate the concept of men and women in the United States, if you can change the law so that there aren't specific reflections of gender in the law. Remember, I mean, the, the way women are protected in the law, we have you know, substantial advantages because we are protected explicitly in the law. You get rid of all of that. You get rid of the the very concept of man and woman. And I think what they're really targeting is that stabilizing institution, which is the nuclear family. Um, look at the idea of selective service. You're gonna take women this age 18 to 25. This is when women are in prime childbearing years. So you're gonna take women 18 to 25. You're going to put them in the infantry. You're going to send them out into combat to be cannon fodder, which they will be. And, and before that, tortured and uh, and raped, uh, because and you're and you're and you're doing this to the generation of women who would be thinking about starting families, who would be thinking about getting married. So I think it, it you know, I, I know it maybe sounds a little dull at this point, but this is just another way to rip apart our single most stabilizing institution in the United States, and that's the nuclear family. Because you're not forming families when you're sending young women off into combat to get tortured, raped, and murdered. You're not going to, you're not putting families first. And by the way, what if the woman has a child already? So you don't even, you don't even consider maintaining the, the familial relationship as you pursue with zeal this diversity checking exercise in allowing women to be signed up for selective service. Did you just come up with a silver lining? Maybe by, if, if they give exemptions for pregnancy and birth, babies, maybe a bunch of women start ha- getting pregnant real fast. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Uh, uh, but flip this around. I th- is there a possibly a more sinister message behind this? That this isn't really about uh, feminism or, 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 or giving women prominent roles in the military. Could it be that the progressive uh, globalists in charge, more and more in charge of our military, as we've seen with General Milley, for instance, is it possible that the, the entire plan here is to create a, a military that really can't yes. fight, that, that is incapable, so. that is meaningfully incapable of going up the chi- against the Chinese, for instance, no realistic way. So that, in other words, we will surrender ultimately before we you ever fight these wars to begin with so if you if you look at the the latest army recruitment ad and many people have probably already seen it although i had a fairly typical childhood took ballet played violin i also marched for equality i like to think i've been defending freedom from an early age when i was six years old one of my moms had an accident that left her paralyzed doctor said she might never walk again, but she tapped into my family's pride to get back on her feet, eventually standing at the altar to marry my other mom. With such powerful role models, I finished high school at the top of my class. I needed my own adventures, my own challenge. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it, a way to prove my inner strength and maybe shatter some stereotypes along the way.
The United States isn't looking to create a, a, a ready force of people who will break stuff and kill people to defend the United States. We want, a, a, I guess, we want a, a big group of people on the government dole who are there to do whatever social service, social justice project that suits them. It's in the case of our recruitment, it's not about the United States. It's not about military readiness. It's not about what's best for the nation. It's about me, you know, but enough about me. What do you think about me? That seems to be the, the direction that we are going with regard to the military. Everybody else seems to be going in the opposite direction. China had its own military ad and it was, again, it was just, oozing masculinity. Here is a nation that has called on explicit uh, direction and education for young men to become more masculinized. And here we are in the United States trying to feminize everything to the point where it, it will be totally dysfunctional. It's time now for some real education on our instant classic segment. It's the segment that always ends the show. We try to balance out the bad news of American education with some genuine, general, with some genuine education. And we've all week been talking about Vincent Van Gogh. He has been our prioritized artist of the week. And one of the reasons we pick him for this week is when you look around the culture, culture, you see how much mental illness there is. You see much, how much chaos and confusion there is. And that certainly surmises the, the, the mental capacity of Vincent Van Gogh. All through his career, all through his life, he struggled with incredible emotional and mental torment. His, his uh, uh, behavior, his ability to control himself, very, very fraught for Vincent Van Gogh. And yet, and yet, in spite of that chaos in his mind, when he painted, painting was a way out of it. Painting was a, what he considered his sanity. And the, the more concerned he became about his mental health at the end of his life, his last year of life, 1889, he checked himself into a sanitarium, the more he painted, the more prolific his painting became. As he pointed out to his brother, Theo, this is what keeps me sane. I, I must paint, he says. Because when I consider not painting, the, the chaos, in, in the words of Shakespeare, the chaos has come again. So I think in many ways, Vincent represents uh, an artist for our times. Uh, the chaos, the anarchy, the, the widespread intellectual and mental deficiencies that we see in the decisions that are being made, but also, too, in the hope that through his art, Vincent was able to take tragedy, take suffering, and to very uniquely in a human way transmute that into beauty. And so take a look at our last image from him for this, uh, this Van Gogh week. And we've got Iris as also from 1889. This is from the year he would eventually take his own life. And you can see just how mature now his process is, how his method, his post-impressionist way of painting has really grown. I mean, what you've got is a multi-layer painting here. You've got in the background what appear to be sunflowers a trademark uh, flower for Vincent van Gogh, uh, beautiful pictures he has of, of those, those particular flowers. And then in front of them now, you see these irises, uh, very beautiful, a very different kind of plant, very, uh, what, not just in terms of color and contrast, but in, in form and, and uh, morphology, the, the iris is just a totally different plant from those plants behind it. But you see how beautiful they are. Some of them are uh, luxuriant. I mean, they've begun to spread. Uh, at the bottom of the picture, they, it almost looks like they've been trampled, but they begin to move and to, to grow and to spread these irises, uh, these very beautiful flowers. And you see in his brush strokes, when you, when you consider uh, the, the way that heavy paint at the very bottom left where the, gr the, the, so the ground is so to, supposed to be, those browns and those ochres, that makes such a nice distinction from at the top right hand of the picture where you see a grass field. And so framing the iris and the sunflowers is both ground fertile soil and the beautiful, uh, what we would consider almost prairie grass that you see growing there. I mean, he, this is a man who's in full control of our, his artistic powers, even as his mind slips closer and closer to suicide.
All right, just a quick reminder that the best way to access our content is to download our Freedom Project Media app. Simply search Freedom Project in your app store. It's absolutely free and get access to 18 new videos every week, plus our award-winning lectures and our animations. And if you enjoy content, our content, please join the Patriot Club. For your tax-deductible donation, $99 once a year, we will send you this Tumblr, and that allows us to keep this kind of programming going. $99 once a year, we'll send you a Tumblr, tumbler, and you will help support The Dr. Duke Show. That's patriotclub.us. Just go online, patriotclub.us. Now, we do want to take a last minute here to give a shout out, some love to our Patriot Club members. Today, we give a shout out to David from Ontario, Canada. David, thank you so much for supporting us. That's the second Canadian this week. We really appreciate you north of the border. And that's going to do it for this show. Have a little poutine, everybody. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. Until next time, stay educated, eh?